Hello there. My name is Gail Hilton. I'm the Head of Programmes for Care and Quality of Life at the Childhood Dementia Initiative. Thank you for joining me for this presentation. Uh, we're going to take a look at childhood dementia. This is an introductory session um, that will last around half an hour with then some opportunity to ask questions and provide your own thoughts. This presentation uh, is available online and is accompanied by a facilitator guide so that anyone can run this presentation. And there's also a fact sheet that outlines some of the, uh, the statistics associated with childhood dementia. This is the first in a series of four resources that have been funded by the Department of Health. Uh, the part one is an introduction to childhood dementia. Part two is also available online. Uh, it's a series of videos of families talking about how they would like health professionals to work with them and their child. And part three and part four are um, yet to be developed and will be available next year in February 2023. Uh, they are a childhood dementia a clinical perspective, which will be the voices of clinicians that work with families impacted by childhood dementia, and part four will focus on palliative care, end of life and beyond. So let's get started for this introductory uh, session. This is what I'll be talking about today. So we'll talk briefly about what childhood dementia is, the facts, the symptoms, a glimpse of what it is like to live with childhood dementia, and then I'll touch briefly on what the Childhood Dementia Initiative is doing. So firstly, I'm going to play a three minute explainer video to give a sense of what childhood dementia is. Childhood and dementia, two words that shouldn't go together, but sadly they do. Sadder still is that on average, childhood dementia takes a life every 11 minutes. It also takes away the future. So, what is childhood dementia? Childhood dementia results from progressive brain damage caused by over 70 genetic conditions. Just like adults with dementia, children with dementia experience memory loss and confusion. They have difficulty concentrating, understanding, learning and communicating. And they can experience severely disturbed sleep and personality changes too. They can also have behavioural and emotional issues like hyperactivity, anxiety and fear. Each child's experience with dementia is unique. For some, symptoms can appear when they are babies and progress quickly, while for others, they may not appear until they are teenagers. Across all childhood dementia, however, there is one common feature. Childhood dementia is progressive. This means that over months, years or decades, children progressively lose skills they may have already developed, like the ability to write, read, talk, walk and play. Over time, their brains also lose the ability to keep the body functioning properly and, eventually, to keep the body alive. There has been so little investment and therefore limited research into treating childhood dementia. Because of this, most children with childhood dementia die before turning 18. Families impacted by childhood dementia experience many losses. Most significantly, the child loses their future. They lose the opportunity to grow up and experience their adult life. So, how common is childhood dementia? One in 2,800 babies are born with a condition that causes childhood dementia. It's estimated that currently 700,000 children and young people globally are living with childhood dementia. So what can be done? Well, the first step is happening right now. By making people aware of childhood dementia, we can improve diagnosis, care, 
research and quality of life for children and young people with dementia around the world. Together, we can make change. Okay, so that video gives an, an overview that's accessible by anyone to um, understand a little bit more about what childhood dementia is. To recap on a couple of the key messages here, childhood dementia results from progressive brain damage caused by 70 genetic conditions. This was first defined in the literature in 2002 by Kenneth Nunn. Uh, he defined childhood dementia as global neurocognitive decline with multiple developmental skill loss after a period of normal development. One of the hallmark characteristics of childhood dementia is enduring and progressive loss of previously acquired developmental skills in contrast to static or transient loss, for example in the case of head injury or encephalitis. Furthermore, childhood dementia may be distinguished from conditions such as intellectual disability or developmental delay, which are characterised by slow development compared with normal development. For further information on the definitions of childhood dementia, you can access our burden study and white paper from our website. To look in more detail about what dementia is, dementia this is the definition from Dementia Australia, who has recently recognised childhood dementia as a type of, of dementia affecting Australians. Dementia describes a collection of symptoms that are caused by disorders affecting the brain. It is not one specific disease. So again, this is what we're looking at, is childhood dementia as an umbrella term focused on the presentation of symptoms 
uh, for children rather than the biological basis of disease, enabling us to get a whole different scale of economy and draw attention to this little known set of conditions. And when we do that, when we bring these 70 plus conditions together that have all previously been considered individually in their silos with little progress, this is what happens for the statistics. One in 2,800 babies are born with a condition that causes childhood dementia. 75% of these children will die before they turn 18. This means globally, childhood dementia takes a life every 11 minutes and there's 700,000 children and young people worldwide with childhood dementia right now. In Australia, that equates to 2,300 children now living with a condition that has already caused childhood dementia or will cause childhood dementia in the future. And all of these conditions are currently life limiting with no effective treatments or cures. Again, just going back to uh, the definition from 2002, childhood dementia is characterized by enduring and progressive loss of previously acquired developmental skills. I'm going to play this short video here from Professor Peter Schofield. He's the CEO of Neuroscience Research Australia and uh, with huge experience of the dementia world. And he's talking about what the benefits are of considering this group of conditions collectively. In my um, professional experience, I've been working with dementia for many years, particularly inherited forms of dementia, which in, in that form are referred to as early onset, early onset Alzheimer's disease. But we're talking about people who have illness in their 30s, 40s, 50s, instead of in old age. Well, childhood dementia is just a whole nother take on this problem. It's been a fantastic way of integrating many different rare diseases with a unifying focus that enable us to see the common problem. The common problem that families, the individual kids with childhood dementia have to live with. And it's also a way that we can bring the, the research community together because there's now a clearer, more common focus. In my, in So to move on, we'll just talk a little bit here about what childhood dementia looks like for a child. And it, as you heard Peter talk about, this is about looking at the common experience across these children and their families. So, of course, every experience of childhood dementia is unique. Every family is unique um, and how childhood dementia presents in children is unique, but there are common features and these are many of them. Confusion, severely disturbed sleep, memory loss, personality changes, hallucinations, emotional issues like anxiety and fear, trouble concentrating, understanding, learning and communicating, and behavioural issues such as hyperactivity. And this is where I think it's really useful to begin to realise that these are actually all symptoms of adult dementia as well. 
um, and there's so many um, elements of adult dementia and the care that we've developed over the course of many years that can be applied to this cohort as well. So diagnosis is absolutely a, a real focus for these children and the earlier that diagnosis happens, of course, the better. Uh, we know from some of the emerging data from clinical trials that the earlier uh, a clinical trial, a, a child is on a clinical trial, the, the, before the damage has been done, um, the better their outcomes. Childhood dementia uh, may be diagnosed early in infancy, progressing rapidly, and the child might even die in their first year of life. Other children might develop symptoms later in childhood and progress slowly, and some can survive into their late teens or early adulthood. And as I said before, 75% will die before the age of 18. So a largely paediatric issue, but of course, many challenges transitioning into the adult sector by some of this cohort as well. To understand a bit more about what childhood dementia might look like, um, this is a young person who had no symptoms until she was 14 when she first had some seizures. Um, she was then misdiagnosed as having epilepsy. Um, her condition that causes her childhood dementia is known as Lafora disease. Um, it is one of those 70 rare genetic conditions, and she's uh, the only person known in Australia to have this diagnosis currently. I'm going to play this video of Angelina. Many people do find this um, quite upsetting, uh, so please take some time um, and uh, do what you need to do in order to look after yourself. Oh, I can, I can walk. Yep. You can. Down, up, this. Yep. Yeah. Can you read? Sometimes. An algae bloom is a rapid growth of algae presented in both freshwater and saltwater rivers or lakes, killing all species living in the water body. I was waiting for the bus when a lady came And she smiled at me so I did the same And I noticed that there were tears in her eyes I saw a photo of a child to my surprise Oh, she must have a sad story to tell Cause I tell you the photo looked like a little girl Is there anything you struggle with now that bothers you? What? Well, and? In anything that you do Um What is something that it, you It scares me and um, I feel like um, I, I might die. Is that what scares you?
So just take a moment here. Um, I guess this is a, a point in the presentation to take a moment to reflect on um, these dreadful conditions and what they do for children and young people, uh, the impact on the whole family and what is needed. You can see there that Angelina is a typical teenager in many respects with the pink hair and the nails. Um, but what she's actually facing currently is a transition between adult and paediatric services, uh, a ricochet through her whole family on uh, both the emotional, practical logistics of care, navigating systems like the NDIS, palliative care, children's and adults health, um, and so on. Um, I'm sure you will have your own lens to put um, on that particular scenario. So to more formally look at what is happening for families um, and what the impact of a diagnosis of this looks like, um, UNSW has conducted a systematic review and these are some early findings. Families face extensive challenges when navigating their child's care, accessing timely therapies and connecting with health professionals who are knowledgeable regarding their child's condition. Parents also acquire multiple roles involving complex responsibilities such as the management of the disease and caring for siblings while simultaneously grieving losses associated with the child's deterioration. So broadly, in summary, there is huge burden on caregivers and at this point uh, it seems from both parent accounts and emerging research that health and social care systems are not meeting their needs. The Childhood Dementia Initiative is all about being evidence-based and lived experience informed and we are commissioning further research to delve into the psychosocial impacts of a child's diagnosis and their whole experience of childhood dementia and how the health and social care systems respond. We will continue to publish all of the outcomes of our, both our research and focus groups and so on uh, involving families as they share their experiences. So the Childhood Dementia Initiative was set up in response to the burden of disease study that was released in 2020 and you can find that on our website. Uh, this video um, explains, uh, is for mums talking about childhood dementia in their own words and explaining why something needs to be done. And again, this is where I come back to, you know, the, the lived experience, what parents are telling us that they need. And for many of these parents, there is no patient group representing these conditions. They're rare. And those patient groups that exist are poorly resourced. They're often run by volunteers. They are fighting to get the resources for their cohort, which is small. So by bringing these conditions together, as you can see, we can get the economies of scale, we can get action and attention. And in fact, we'll talk about some of the um, progress by the childhood dementia so far. First of all, I'll let these mums share their voices. My name is Bobby Riddle. I am the mother of Taylor who is seven years old. My daughter has childhood dementia caused by Batten disease. Hi, my name is Karen and I have twin daughters, Amelia and Mackenzie, who have childhood dementia due to juvenile Batten disease. My name's Anna and I'm the mother of Sebi who had childhood dementia caused by Tay-Sachs disease. My name is Kelly and I'm on to Penny. Penny has childhood dementia, which is caused by San Felipe syndrome. Childhood dementia is watching and caring for your child as they die in slow motion. Childhood dementia is when your daughter asks who you are. Childhood dementia is every parent's worst nightmare. We've had to watch our beautiful seven-year-old daughter lose the ability to run, to walk, to dance. She's lost cognitive skills so she can no longer count or sing her favourite nursery rhymes. 
She's lost the ability to speak. She's going blind. She's finding it harder and harder to recognize family and friends. The Childhood Dementia Initiative is the key to solving this problem. There is so little knowledge and research being done in this area and we need to be able to invest in it to be able to give our children and parents hope for the future. An end to childhood dementia would mean that thousands of families all over the world could continue to live their lives normally and without fear of the future. An end to childhood dementia would save other families the heartbreak of watching their children suffer as their minds slip away. For any parent with a child with a neurodegenerative disease, it's all that we could ever wish for. An end to childhood dementia would mean that these children are able to live the lives that they deserve to live. So those mothers are just I, every time their um, their voices blow me away, and it's a great reminder as to why we're here and how important this work is. So the Childhood Dementia Initiative started in November 2020, um, almost two years ago now, and we have three key areas of focus. I'm going to start in the middle here. The first is around increasing awareness and um broad advocacy and we're about systemic advocacy not individual advocacy and that underpins all of the work that we do because until we've increased awareness of this group of conditions uh, we can't create any action and again this is about creating economies of scale and some common language so that we can draw attention to this space families tell us regularly that childhood dementia is really confronting language but it is what is needed in order to describe what is happening for their child, for them to build communities of support that understand what's happening for their child and them as a family, and in order to get cut through. 
the platform that's desperately needed is around accelerating therapeutic development. So we are advocating for large scale funding for research into this space, developing research networks and collaboration um, in research across conditions. And again, if you are uh, in a researcher or interested in research in this space, and if you head to our website, there's a space for researchers explaining some of the work that we're doing. We have had some success um, to date. Uh, earlier this year, um, Greg Hunt, when he was Minister for Health, recognised childhood dementia as a health priority and opened the first ever MRFF round dedicated to this group of conditions. Um, there is still much more to be done, of course. And our other area, um, the area I'm responsible for, is improving the care and quality of life for families. And all of this starts with really understanding and evidencing what is happening for families. Uh, a systematic review has currently been submitted for publication by the UNSW, and uh, we will make that available widely, of course, once that is published. And we have another uh, proposal pending funding um, that will look in depth over a number of years at the psychosocial impacts um, on families across Australia, their experience of health and social care systems, and ultimately that research and the information um, that will be gathered through that process will inform a framework of care uh, for families. And if you're interested in being involved in that work, we'd be really keen to hear from you as well. So those are our three areas, increasing awareness, driving uh, research and improving care and quality of life. As I spoke about at the beginning of this presentation, uh, this is the first in a, a series of information modules. Working with Families is now live on our website and you can find a series of videos from families talking about what they need from health professionals that are working with them. And then two more to come around the clinical perspective, palliative care and end of life. I note that one thing that I have forgotten to mention in this presentation and, and often what people ask me is what are these conditions? What are the 70 conditions? So I might ask you right now to take out your phones or your laptops or tablets and just take a moment to Google what is childhood dementia. And what should come up for you is our website and a page that explains in layman's terms, what childhood dementia is, with a link to a page that lists those 70 rare genetic conditions. We are governed by a scientific and medical advisory committee, and all of our work is evidence-based, so you'll find the set of references uh, required um, to inform that page there. But it will give you a good sense of children that you might be working with yourself, or children that you know in any other guise. Um, we're talking about conditions like San Filippo syndrome, Button disease, Neiman Pick C, some of the mito conditions, um, Tay Sachs and Sandhoff diseases. But take some time and become familiar with our website, and we keep that updated with all publications. I want to thank you for joining me for this presentation. Um, it was an introductory session on childhood dementia. There is, of course, more information to come, and we are really keen to understand what it is that you need. I'd really appreciate you taking the time to scan this QR code and completing a short survey, which should only take two to three minutes, um, which will help guide us in, in both improvements in this presentation and what we develop next. Uh, you can also leave your details for us to keep you up to date with all of the work that's happening at the Childhood Dementia Initiative and in this space more broadly. So once again, thank you for joining me. And of course, I am very keen to hear any questions and thoughts. Many thanks.